Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, we, we, we can start. Uh, firstly, we will uh, pre present ourselves and then you will present yourself, yeah, Luisa, and I will translate, yeah. Um, здравствуйте, дорогие гости, это <laughs> Мария Антона Надежда из проекта «Чего хочет Парнас», и у нас очередная лекция, на этот раз с нами бюро Зулу Арк, и сейчас, я думаю, нам представитель бюро Луиса сам расскажет о себе, и мы начнем. Я буду переводить части материала, часть он попросил, что он расскажет сам без перевода, но можно будет задавать вопросы в чат, он сейчас тоже это озвучит, и я переведу. Если будут какие-то вопросы, да, и прочее, сразу сразу же пишите по ходу, можно его прерывать и так далее. Окей, Луиса, now you can start and I will translate. Антон, sorry, sorry, Антон is saying something, but it's not. Пожалуйста, еще на английском, потому что с нами англоговорящие друзья в чате, видео. Ага. Yes, I see. I see. This is uh, Aurora. This is uh, Luisa, partner from the bureau. Uh, да, я вижу тут Аврора, еще тоже с, uh, коллега Луиса. Да, да, да. Mm -hmm. Okay. But we, we can start, yeah, Anton? Надя, на английском представься. Ah, okay. Anton is saying that I should uh, say in English. Uh, who who are we for Aurora? Uh, just a sec. But why in chat? I just uh, ah in English. Sorry. Okay. Uh, Aurora and Luisa. Uh, I'll, I'll quickly translate what I've just said for uh, the Russians. It's, uh, we are Maria and uh, Anton and Nadezhda from the project What Does Parnas Want, uh, which is a, so to say also a tactical urbanism project from. Russia, we are trying to uh, change uh, a new development, a uh, new residential development in uh, St. Petersburg in Russia. And we have now a workshop there with citizens working on a pocket park project. And uh, uh, we also have a series of uh, lectures and uh, we invited you guys to uh, have a lecture and nice discussion with us. Thank you very much for joining us. And uh, Luisa, you can start, I think, right now. Well, hello everyone. Um, I'm Luisa from Sularg, and um, I wanted to start first of all saying thank you, thank you for to our new friends in Russia, especially to Nadizda, Maria, and Anton for inviting us to share our approaches and our practices. They are very have many things in common. Second of all, I want to listen to I want to first say thank you to the, everybody listening and participating on this event online uh, knowing that it's very difficult to be connected to what's going on because there are so many things going on so thank you everyone for being there where mm -hmm. and the third thing i want to say thank you to juan chacon from Zuloar for connecting all of us and uh, special thanks and dedication to Aurora, which is hopefully listening somewhere uh, from Sulo Art too, for the amazing knowledge sharing that she does all the time from where this talk has been done and uh, for the learning spaces that she creates that makes me feel especially lucky for having the opportunity mm -hmm. to learn a lot from her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, I will tr translate. Yeah, okay. uh, very uh, quickly. Uh, uh, it's Juan, представитель бюро Zuloa. Он очень рад всех вас видеть. В первую очередь, спасибо Надежде, Антону и Марии за то, что собрали всех нас здесь. В особенности интересно, что у нас есть похожие подходы в работе, и было бы здорово этим поделиться. Во-вторых, спасибо за то, что всем вам за то, что присоединились онлайн в это время, когда столько всего происходит вокруг, и так сложно выбрать, куда пойти из онлайн-мероприятий. И третье, спасибо Хуану Чекону и а, Авроре, моим коллегам, а, за то, что 
а, всегда делитесь своими знаниями, я много вас подчеркнула, это здорово, что вы создаете среду, в которой можно обучаться. Угу. Okay. Um, well, for the talk, I thought of uh, having like three different parts that I'm going to tell you. First, it's uh, describing Thulark with the three concepts that we, from where we try to define a little bit uh, what we are and wh how mm -hmm. who we are. Mm -hmm. uh, the second part will be a short introduction of what we understand about tactical urbanism, mm -hmm. kind of uh, the mm -hmm. definitions and thoughts that we have about it. And uh, after part, I will just uh, we'll go through a few examples of our work, introducing uh, some questions for the conversation afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, shall I translate? Yep. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, в своем рассказе я буду говорить о трех моментах. Первый — это рассказ о том, кто такие Золо Арк, кто мы и чем занимаемся. Второе — я расскажу о том, как мы понимаем тактический урбанизм, какие мысли, методы, подходы используем. И третье — я покажу примеры работ, которые мы делаем. So I will, uh, I will share my screen with you to have some images illustrating the, what I'm saying. Делюсь с вами экраном, чтобы показать то, что иллюстрирует то, что буду говорить. Are you watching? Yes, we can, we can see it, yeah. Okay. Okay, there we go. So, for describing solo arch, new architectural environments, as our title. The first concept I want to talk about solo arch is the flowing hierarchies. We are not organized in a classic pyramid structure, nor in a horizontal manner. Mm -hmm. With every new project that we individually get involved, mm -hmm. it changes. There is not a boss, but we also know that we are not equal in our skills or avail availability. The keystone mm -hmm. in what they call architectural collectives is how to profit from being a networking group of people that can bring out the strength of each individual. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, итак, uh... Uh, основной принцип в нашей работе — это uh, текущие иерархии. То есть uh, у нас не uh, вертикальная и не горизонтальная структура. Uh, для, в каждом проекте мы индивидуально выстраиваем uh, uh, нашу работу. И мы знаем, что у нас нет как такового босса, но при этом мы знаем, что мы и не равны в своих навыках. У каждого есть какие-то свои особенные качества. Uh, и uh, в каждом проекте мы стараемся наиболее эффективно выстроить эту систему. Uh -huh. The second concept to talk about us is the distributed architectural platform. FullArc is a flexible infrastructure that has evolved to adapt to its member changing lives. Normally, someone mm -hmm. is supposed to move to the place where wow. the job is provided. But we think the other way around. And we see in the search of our personal horizons an opportunity mm -hmm. to our working platform to adapt mm -hmm. and grow wiser by starting projects wherever our members happen to be. Wow. Ага, да, окей, uh, okay. uh, Еще один важный концепт нашего бюро — это распределенная архитектурная платформа. Uh, то есть мы очень uh, подвижны относительно того, где находятся наши сотрудники, и адаптируем наше бюро под это. Если кому-то по каким-то причинам нужно переехать в другой город, uh, мы видим это как новую возможность. То есть мы стараемся делать проекты там, где находится uh, участник нашего бюро, Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, and here's a list of the places that uh, we are working now. In mm -hmm. black is our actual uh, uh, working spaces, Madrid, 
Berlin, Bologna in Italy, and La Coruña in the north of Spain. And we used to have an office that is uh, now a bit uh, um, hidden or not that active in Barcelona, Brussels, and Mexico. And uh, opening new new spaces, a new way, uh, environmental, I mean, a new environments of work in Athens and Bogota, mm -hmm. in Colombia, Athens, in Greece. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. А, и здесь перечислены те города, в которых мы работаем, в которых у нас сотрудники, офисы. Основные это Берлин, Болонья, Лакарунья и Мадрид. Есть еще три офиса, которые тоже есть, но они так несколько уже в своей работе уже не, не так явны. Это Барселона, Брюссель и Мехико и новые открывающиеся офисы в Афинах и Богате. Okay, and the last concept is the liquid professional framework. Mm -hmm. We never stop questioning the concepts linked to the traditional understanding of authorship in architecture. And nowadays, our aim is how to blur the limits between professional office and our projects. Thuloark has always been the most important project for Thuloark. However, we've included part of other projects and offices in ongoing projects, melting our authorship to increase the collaboration project potential. Uh, um, I, I want to clarify, so these are the projects uh, that you also, so, so your colleagues you worked on, you also integrate yeah. them. Not these what are, Zulorg, it, but uh, projects on which you worked um, apart from it. Yes, we collaborate with these projects and we become, mm. we melt our identity into the project identity. And these four projects that I bring here is Ciudad Escuela, Inteligencias Colectivas, El Campo de la Cebada, and Ukraina at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, да, Луиса сказал, что uh, они стараются интегрироваться с другими проектами, то есть не то, они не работают не только в рамках Дулу Арк, но у них есть коллаборации с перечисленными здесь проектами. Ну, вот он в последнее предложение их назвал из-за того, что это испанские слова, мне сложно воспроизвести, но это название этих компаний. Окей, so I will go with the second part. And I will talk uh, about I got the... a question. As the second part, you said, at the second part, you will quickly describe the project, and I shouldn't translate, but Everybody can answer, uh, ask questions, yeah? No, no, this part, uh, we can talk about uh, short things and then you can translate. And okay. on the third part, I will just be just talking about the projects and that okay. will be just to talk about it. Okay, I got it, okay. Mm -hmm. You can start. So, okay. <laughs> so, um, the, the title for this, for this conference uh, was like a tactical urbanism conceiving the interruption of the city as an experimental space for urban innovation. And uh, to st the starting point will be, what is tactical urbanism for us? We conceive tactical urbanism as an interruption, as an interruption on the way we normally do things, an interruption on the normal way the city develops itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Вначале, <coughs> простите, хотелось бы сказать о том, как мы понимаем тактический урбанизм. Мы понимаем его как некое прерывание привычного хода вещей, того, как мы обычно воспринимаем пространство, и прерывание привычного функционирования города, то есть отход от такого обыденного. Mm -hmm. And uh, a short definition of what we understand as tactical urbanism is an action-based solution to design transitions. И второй принцип, который мы понимаем как тактический урбанизм, это 
при внесении изменений за счет решений, основанных на действиях, то есть а, на, как бы, на, на акциях. Ну, по, по русскому языке мы тоже говорим, что мы проводим какие-то акции на территории, какие-то мероприятия, какие-то действия. Угу. Transitions, uh, we understand as the process where something is altered or transformed to mm -hmm. become something else, hopefully upgrading from the previous state. Mm -hmm. uh, и третий принцип — это изменение, когда uh, место меняется и становится чем-то другим и uh, по, по возможности чем-то лучшим относительно того, каким оно было до этого. Mm -hmm. An action meaning the activity of doing or building something that creates or results in the emergence of a new set of interactions. Mm -hmm. uh, the следующий принцип это действие, то есть это процесс создания uh, чего-то, что uh, собственно станет источником этого прерывания обыденности. Mm -hmm. At, uh, For about the interruptions, we understand they can take different forms. First one will be, it can be an interruption on, in the normal way we do things, producing an alteration on the ecosystems. Mm -hmm. uh, и, конечно, вот это вот прерывание обыденности, обыденных вещей, оно uh, может иметь различные формы, Uh, в том числе такую более простую — это именно изменение экосистем. Луисо, uh, 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 you will explain uh, more about what you understand under ecosystems in this case later on or right now? Maybe. Right now. I, I will explain through the picture we have here. Mm -hmm. This is Campo de la Cebada and this is a... We, in this assembly, we were watching the, the new project that it was a, a, a huge dome that it was going to be built. And the alteration of the ecosystem is that normally this type of, of meetings where the architect shows the project, they, they're never on the exactly place where the dome was going to be built. Uh -huh. We were actually like inside the place where the dome was going to be built in the future. And also what is completely different is that uh, the, the project is being explained at the same time for everybody, for uh, the people that wanted to be in there and also of uh, some architects that were going to be involved in the construction process. But this is the first meeting where the designers and the, the, of the dome, the people that were going to, to build it, explain it Uh, to the assembly how, we, how it was going to be built and also mm -hmm. something a different way of doing doing things alterating the ecosystem is that normally this type of uh, process this model that you see in there is actually talking about the structure and they build it so they could understand how the structure was going to function and it was mm -hmm. a much more easier way to understand Uh, the possibilities of the structure for the normal citizens on the assembly that a digital model that is way more uh, um, encrypted to understand. Mm -hmm. So this is a completely different way of doing things and it completely changes or alters the ecosystem that normally works around the, the design and the explanation and the building of an architectural project. Uh -huh. а сейчас я поясню, что я имею в виду под э, изменением вносимых в экосистему. В данном случае мы видим людей, которые э, смотрят на проект большого купола, который должны построить. Э, и обычно э, при таких собраниях, э, да, обсуждениях проекта, э, люди собираются не там, где этот объект будет построен. А сейчас мы видим, что они сидят прямо в том месте, где будет этот купол. И сейчас у всех участников процесса, в том числе не архитекторов, есть возможность получить объяснения, вопросы относительно того, как все будет устроено и построено. Это тоже важное изменение. Ну и, конечно, то, что сейчас мы видим модель физическую построенную, а обычно людям все-таки показывают 3D-картинки, которые на самом деле для не архитекторов они не совсем понятны. Это тоже важное внесение вот в привычный ход вещей. Mm -hmm. 
And the, another way could be, will be an interruption in the way we normally think about something, becoming an alteration, alteration on the paradigm or on the scheme. Здесь еще такой аспект, как изменение вносимое в парадигму. And could you probably also uh, explain uh, in this case what do you mean by paradigm? Okay. Uh, uh -huh. The paradigm is the, is the way we th the things are, are set up or thought or established. In this case, I bring this photograph is from uh, Jess Janes, a project we did in the north of Spain to, to build. Uh, it was a process for building the general urban planning of the area. And they invite us to to think about how the participatory part of the plan, how it could be. Because we were architects, I mean, we are architects and we were planners and they want us to give a proposition or our thoughts on how to do that, that part of the urban, uh, urban uh, agenda, mm -hmm. urban general uh, plan. And uh, what we did instead of thinking that, but ourselves in our office, what we did is that we went into the territory and we start to talk with the neighbors And we start to share our thoughts with the neighbors and uh, collect all their thoughts and all their needs and all their propositions and all their uh, uh, communicate with them so we can share this process and amplify what we could uh, what we could establish so that the general the participatory part of the general plan could be done in a completely different way. So we established the participation before the participation, and it was a completely different way of making the citizens participate. The blackboard you see over there is just the blackboard where we notice in every single little council that we went over there about 29 uh, places. We have these meetings. It was like a one day long meeting and one day to prepare and one day to edit the information, but uh, it was, 29 days of thinking together how the participatory part of the general plan could be thinking together with the citizens that were actually living the territories that we wanted to that what the general plan was going to be mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, uh, and also i see uh, here aurora uh, posted on uh, chat uh, i will say it in english firstly for you also to hear and then i will translate aurora said that we usually understand paradigm as the mental models the tools references model that shape the way we think our world uh ну, в общем, можно сразу добавить и Аврору. Аврора дополняет, что парадигма, я спросила, что понимается под парадигмой в данном контексте, Аврора говорит, что обычно мы понимаем парадигму как какие-то мысленные модели, инструменты, примеры, в общем, то, как мы думаем о, о, о мире, как бы образ мышления вещей. И Луиса сказала, что на этой картинке мы видим проект в Северной Испании. Здесь необходимо было сделать общую градостроительную концепцию района, и их пригласили для этой работы, так как они архитекторы и планировщики. И вместо того, чтобы размышлять самим, как бы вот, как бы именно только архитекторам о том, каким должно быть это пространство, а они поняли, что важно а, привлечь жителей еще до процесс, процесса партиципации, еще до, до придумывания а, как, кон, а, именно концепции, необходимо уже было работать с этими людьми. А, и они разговаривали с жителями, собирали их идеи, а, общались на а, а, доске, а, которую мы видим на заднем плане информация, пример того, как они собирали информацию, они собирали ее в 29 местах, 
они побывали, чтобы поговорить с жителями, и, как правило, один день занимала подготовка, один день проведения, то есть это была очень-очень большая работа, но очень важный, совершенно другой подход, нежели обычно. Окей, so, uh, now we ask ourselves, but uh, interruption, why? Why should be the city interrupted? And we think of three whys. The first one is an interruption to stop something from happening. Mm -hmm. Interruption to stop something from happening. And I'm going to explain a little bit. Here, the neighbors wanted to demand to the government that this public space could be reopened. So we wanted to stop the situation of this public space that you see on the left to be closed forever or to be closed during the time that they, they weren't going to build the, the facility that was supposed to be there, that it was a public uh, multi-sport and the swimming pool center. Mm -hmm. And on the right, you could see this uh, community starting this was one of the of the beginning i mean at the very beginning of the process um, at the starting point where they try to reclamate this situation to start it to be open and on the left you could see one of the first one the first days that we that it was open the space mm -hmm. Угу. А, и теперь нужно поговорить о том, а, а вообще зачем вот это вот прерывание обыденности, основно, а, зачем нужно это делать. И один из первых моментов, а, аспектов, это когда мы а, хотим а, прекратить а, происходящее какое-то событие. То есть мы хотим, чтобы что-то прекратилось а, происходить. А, в данном контексте а мы видим общественное пространство, которое было закрыто, и жители очень просили администрацию города это пространство открыть. А главное, не строить там мультифункциональный центр спортивный с бассейном, а, а чтобы это было открыто для всех пространств. И вот а, справа мы видим фотографию а, жителей а, в первый день, когда наконец пространство открыли, и жители как бы а, радуются тому, что это пространство теперь как бы принадлежит жителям им. Uh -huh. The second why is an interruption to push forward or to enhance something that already exists, as if to bring to light or to infrastructure the possibilities of a place on the basis of what is already there. Uh -huh. А, и а, второе, почему, ну или для чего делать это прерывание обыденности, а, это для того, чтобы а, подтолкнуть, а, развить то, что уже происходит на этой территории, то есть форсировать а, события. Uh -huh. And in this case, what happened in this square is that nobody was actually using the, this space on the, on the center, and everybody was sitting and like hanging out in different areas. So we wanted to give back this uh, space, the, the opportunity to be a meeting place by giving, by making all these uh, shadows and with this infrastructure a little bit more and a little bit more uh, benches, uh, urban furniture to sit down because the ones that were over there, they were never used because of the sun. This is in Karachi in Pakistan, where there's a lot, a lot of sun. В данном случае мы видим пример площади, на которую не использовали полноценно обычные люди, как-то в разных частях, уголках пытались сидеть. Например, скамейки, которые здесь были, не использовались активно из-за того, что сильное солнце было, очень яркое. Uh, и мы создали вот эту конструкцию, и скамейки расположили в других местах, то есть сделали так, чтобы эта площадь uh, как бы на начала использоваться uh, в полной мере. Окей, и второй вопрос — это интервьюция, интервьюция, чтобы продвигать что-то новое. И мы имеем два опции здесь. Первый вопрос — это интервьюция, чтобы продвигать что-то новое, которое вы можете контролировать. Mm -hmm. something that you want to achieve 
and that you, with a little intervention, something that we refer as the expected. The example that I saw here is uh, a project we did uh, uh, for the, the White Knight project. That is a night when there's so many things going on in the middle of the street during the whole day, the culture invades the public street, the public uh, space, and uh, all the cultural facilities are open all night long. And um, this uh, tactical intervention consists on putting intergenerational playgrounds, urban furniture on the city center for mm -hmm. that night. And afterwards, install them at El Gallinero, an informal neighborhood on the really poor periphery of Madrid. Mm -hmm. And all that was planned. Still, there was a space for improvisation on the process, but it was all well planned. Mm -hmm. On the right, you could see the, the, how it was installed in the center of Madrid. And on the left, you could see how, it's, how it was installed at El Gallinero, this uh, really far away neighborhood of Madrid. And here's the, another example of one, another intergener intergenerational playground urban furniture installed first in Madrid city center and then in uh, El Gallinero area. Mm -hmm. uh, еще один аспект это uh, прерывание обыденности для того, чтобы uh, создать что-то новое. Uh, то есть uh, и, здесь, и здесь может быть два варианта. Один из них это когда мы контролируем uh, процесс, то есть результат ожидаемый. Uh, и в данном случае uh, на предыдущем слайде uh, мы видели Uh, пример uh, так называемая белая ночь напоминает в общем-то ночь музеев нашу с вами такой микс фестиваль живые улицы и ночь музеев это я <laughs> тебя добавляю чтобы примерно представляли uh, то есть белая uh, белая ночь когда uh, весь день uh, в центре города проход, uh, проходят различные мероприятия и в общественном пространстве открыты и музеи Uh, и вот Зулар uh, показывали пример, когда они создали uh, в центре города несколько uh, площадок и, и игровых зон. Uh, а позже, уже по окончанию этого мероприятия, uh, эти площадки перенесли в бедные районы Мадрида. Uh, и на прошлом uh, изображении был вот вариант там, справа в, в центре города, слева там был уже перенесенный, а здесь вот наоборот, слева это в центре города и справа уже перенесенный в бедный район. Uh -huh. Okay, and the second one will be to produce an, uh, to the, in, an interruption to produce something new that is unexpected. So that it's an action that uh, it's out of your control. Mm -hmm. As an example of this, I bring the project uh, Campo de la Cebada. This, uh, this in English, it could be said as the barely filled. That's the name of the, of the space and the project. And it's an equipe square where the tone was set, the outline was defined, the rule of use was set, and the infrastructure was open to use, letting things happen. And uh, an explanation about what is the, uh, to produce the interruption of something new that is an unexpected is that we set up this uh, basketball and soccer court, just uh, building the, the metal uh, goal and the, the blackboard for, for the basketball, I mean, the, the backboard of the basketball and the net. And then we just put the lines on the floor. And then what happened afterwards is that it becomes to be reinvented by the citizens. First thing that you could see on the pictures is that the backboard of the basketball that they're playing over there, it's, uh, it was, it make a lot of noise because the metal, uh, black, uh, the metal board was not, I mean, it was uh, not well weld. So it make a lot of noise. And then some of the neighbors one day that were there, they, they make this uh, wonderful uh, fabric uh, tissue that you could see over there. 
And uh, it was very nice to see that everybody loved it. Even the people playing the basketball left it there for some time. But uh, the, what happened in the, especially in this uh, uh, furniture that have a lot of use, it, it, it was that it was always uh, something broken and they have to be fixed. And the unexpected part of this is when we, the people that were playing the basketball, they organized their, their basketball matches, they organized teams inside Cebada. They also, at the end, they, they ended up organizing a league of different teams playing at Cebada. And they kind of inhabit all this uh, infrastructure. We give them the opportunity to understand how the square was equipped and how to manage this equipment and they ended up knowing that if they want to fix the net, what they're doing over here, they, they could do it. it is, they have the opportunity or the possibility to uh, fix the things and they don't have to wait for somebody to fix what's going on, on all the, all the broken parts. Mm -hmm. uh, and before I start translating, could you clarify, this was a place where the dome was supposed to be built, yeah? Yeah, this is the same project. Another uh -huh, part okay. of the same project. Mm -hmm. And could, could you uh, go back to the uh, previous slide so that everybody would see the picture once again? So, and um, uh, 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 another uh, reason for the creation of something new is when we want to create unexpected results, unexpected And in this case, we на который в будущем будет, должен был быть построен этот большой купол, который мы видели на первых слайдах. Но до того, как он был построен, решили открыть это пространство для использования жителями и сделали здесь баскетбольную площадку. И, соответственно, поставили конструкцию с корзиной, нарисовали здесь все необходимую разметку. Uh, и uh, дальше произошло как раз неожиданно это то, что жители стали уже дальше сами обживать это пространство. Например, из-за того, что конструкция для корзины uh, была, возможно, не совсем идеально сварена, она создавала много шума, потому что металл ударялся мяч. Uh, и uh, некоторые жители были недовольны, но зато другие жители придумали решение с тканью. Они, uh, вот там, в принципе, можно увидеть, что за корзиной uh, тканью обтянута доска, которая находится за корзиной, да, и, и это спасло ситуацию, и все стали довольны, не было уже недовольных людей. Далее, опять-таки, можно было там увидеть, что там находилась мебель, которую туда бюро поставило, и жители уже сами ее обживали, понятно, что мебель могла ломаться, но опять-таки жители научились сами а, быть менеджерами пространства, они научили, поняли, что можно все самим чинить, если что-то сломалось, не обязательно кого-то ждать. Окей, и теперь мы поговорим немного о доме и о том, что мы считаем индивидуальным, когда мы подходим к тактическому урбанизму, это то, что когда мы делаем это или эту интервенцию, Beyond the urban furniture, beyond the action or the things we put in operation on the public space, what we are seeking to build are learning environments. Spaces where we can test experiments on the city, producing a process of innovation that accept errors with the commitment to analyze the whole process so that we can learn from what went wrong and from what went right and do something about it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, I will translate. Uh, uh, so everybody is sorry if there would be some uh, child no noise because my, my, my child is back from uh, his uh, walk outside with daddy. So uh, sorry if there would be some там noise. Окей. Я извинилась за то, что если вдруг будет немножко детского шума, потому что ребенок вернулся с папой из прогулки, и можете услышать какие-нибудь детские слова. Так, перевожу далее. И один из важных аспектов это то, что любое создание пространства — это не только и не просто мебель, а это в первую очередь это нечто за гранью. Мебели — это пространство для изучения, исследования, обучения. И когда команда Zulu Arc создает какой-то проект в пространстве, то в первую очередь они хотят проанализировать, что прошло 
хорошо, что прошло плохо, и что с этим можно делать. Mm -hmm. And we will also uh, look for when doing these things. It's the amplify epistemic communities of people with whom we think, develop, manage, evaluate, and take care of the project in style. Since the beginning of our work on urban projects, we have been interested in creating human networks and social tissues around the project. From the people interested or affected or simply that simply that want to join on the development of the ideas on the public scenario. Many times these groups become communities of affection. With an, we have an expression in Spanish that says, grabbing makes the love and the working together on these open projects that invites as many agents as possible to participate, it normally happens. On this collective knowledge, many times we found hidden powers of everyday citizens that we love to discover and include in the process. Так, и uh, еще очень важный момент – это uh, создание сообщества, uh, в котором люди, переживающие за проект, то есть создание некой uh, социальной материи, uh, то есть uh, люди, которые uh, готовы подключиться к развитию этого проекта и uh, лучше всего привлечь как можно больше участников. Uh, и нам нравится, когда uh, в процессе вот, работы над проектом uh, выявляется такой uh, скрыт, выявляется скрытое знание, которое вдруг обнаруживается у жителей и которые совершенно потрясающие и мы рады всегда применять в своих проектах. Sorry, Aurora has uh, written something. Uh, oh, and we just uh, have uh, also a couple of questions, but they will be later. Uh, okay, I think Aurora has been commenting. Uh, um, Okay, I think I have to translate what Aurora has written. Sorry that I missed it. Uh, I was a little bit nervous that my family was coming back. Um, Aurora has written that, that's not a question, but a comment from her, and she's a colleague uh, of uh, Luisa, I have to translate. Здесь Аврора у нас дополнила вопросы, будет в конце, но Аврора коллега Луиса, поэтому нужно зачитать. So, firstly, in English, about what should be stopped, uh, there is a mundane example about rewarding cars to go through small streets in the middle of the city or suspend the abandonment of back and lots and try to reopen them to the public. Здесь Аврора говорит о том, что есть пример, когда стараются убрать uh, машины с маленьких улиц в центре города и uh, создать свободные пространства, которые можно uh, как бы передать обратно жителям. Uh, and also she added, everything could be ruined, what control means for us. Us as designers, is that we do have an ideal future in our minds about what this space should be, and we can more or less, sorry, we can more or less uh, manage a considerable bunch of variables in the process to get to this point. But control is never really an option. We embrace change while working. Maybe it's better to do it later. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, she suggested that we could translate it later. Sorry. Oh, no. uh, back to this later. Let's sorry. continue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, continue. And uh, well, I'm going to talk about now about the challenge that emerged from all these situations that I've been mentioning. And I'm going to talk about three different challenges that, that we are experimenting many times we work on this tactical urbanism projects. The first one is the experimental collaborations. Make Mixing people with different skills and disciplines, with different approaches and experience levels to work together, providing a working environment where they could establish connections and envision future possibilities together. In designing this environment, it can be tested how they mix, match, and develop. You can translate that. Конечно, uh, важно. Ой, сейчас название слайда мне не видно. А, а, важно а, соединять различные а, категории людей в проекте, с различного возраста, а, профессия, образования, а, пола и так далее, для того, чтобы создать а, 
действительно такую богатую совместную работу, качественную, и заодно проверить на, в конкретном проекте, как вообще эти люди между собой сочетаются и могут взаимодействовать. Uh -huh. another, another challenge that emerged is the knowledge composition where different ways of understanding reality and the variety of working methodologies converge in an open, inclusive conversation that allows different knowledges to come together and compose a wider and a wiser set of knowledge about the project. Другая, я сейчас, кстати, забыла добавить, что Луис называет те вот, проблемы, те важные аспекты, с которыми не сталкиваются в работе, и вот до этого был первый, а сейчас второй про знания и микс из знаний, то есть это важность другого взгляда на реальность другого понимания реальности, то есть соединение различного знания, которое есть об этой территории, о проекте, и таким образом тоже обогащение проекта. Угу. And the, the example that I bring here is the one of the first, I mean, actually, this was the first uh, uh, party event that uh, we had in this uh, empty space in, in Campo de la Cervada. And it was very interesting how, how to see how it was, it was mixed with, uh, it was the day of Madrid, like the traditional day of Madrid. And these people on the right are like uh, making this, uh, traditional way of uh, parting and uh, how the mix of knowing how to party and how to uh, be on the street celebrating the, this uh, festive day. It was very nice to see how they combine both of the ways and uh, we finally managed that these people came together and uh, celebrate together in a completely different way of doing it. И в данном случае я привожу пример первого такого праздника, фестиваля на той территории с баскетбольным полем. И это происходило в день Мадрида, такой большой праздник. И здесь можно увидеть, как вообще по-разному можно праздновать, каким тоже разнообразным и богатым может быть празднование. These two pictures were in the, in the same place at the same time. Эти две картинки, фотографии сделаны в одном и том же месте в одно и то же время и не показывают насколько разным. Well, and the last uh, challenge that emerged and I'm going to talk about is the governance of the conflicts. We're always trying to inhabit the conflict. The opposite of what governments normally do, running away from conflicts or trying to make them disappear without dealing with them. Inhabiting in the sense of intermediating, identifying the parts, listening to the sides, discussing the problem with the sides and bringing the parties closer. We realize that from the conflicts, the opportunity of innovation emerge. Many times we make mistakes, but by making those mistakes, we also lose the fear to fail and allow us to enter innovative process or to the innovative process to begin. Without losing the fear of making mistakes, we understand it is very difficult to enter into an innovative process. You can translate. Uh, just a second. I will talk a little bit about the conflict here. There is this uh, multi... Yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, okay, go you ahead. You wanted to continue? I'll quickly uh, translate it, just that I uh, have to stop for one second. Здесь мы видим еще один челлендж, еще одну проблему, с которой мы сталкиваемся. Это разрешение конфликта управление конфликтами и в отличие от а, правительства да которое старается конфликты избегать прятаться от них э, в общем боится конфликтов мы конфликтов не боимся мы а, считаем что именно в конфликте может возникнуть какое-то инновационное решение и какая 
это подвижка в проекте, и мы стараемся выявлять конфликты, прислушиваться к людям, стараться их сблизить друг к другу и конфликт этот решить. And uh, well, these three challenges that uh, appear and that emerge in the governing of the installed infrastructure basically becomes a project in itself. Just to add that. Все три, в общем, сложности, проблемы, которые я озвучила, они обычно в итоге сами перерастают в проект. То есть решение проблем ведет к проектам. And just to end with this uh, reflection, I will say that we don't think about tactical urban interventions as pieces that stays for a few days and then they're gone. Instead, we are more interested in thinking about the following questions. You want me to go? Well, I will just go through the questions that are on the screen. With uh -huh. who are we thinking about this project? And what participatory open process are we going to have for designing, building, installing, and managing the piece? If you want to translate that. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, uh, и, uh, конечно же, Луиса uh, говорит, что они относятся к политическому урбанизму, не к uh, как бы процессу, который создает что-то, что временно и уйдет. В первую очередь, им интересно, а что останется после, и интересно задать вопросы. И он здесь их перечисляет. Первый — это а, что мы думаем об этом? А, мы, who are we thinking? А, с кем мы а, думаем об этом проекте? А, какой а, процесс участия а, мы создаем для а, проектирования, строительства, установки и эксплуатации этого а, проекта? And starting on the project, what can we learn from the context and how do we make the hidden knowledge visible and accessible and how do we design from that? Что мы можем изучить из контекста, узнать из контекста и как мы можем сделать видимым и доступным скрытое знание и как мы можем проектировать уже начиная вот с этой точки? Who will be in charge of the artifact? Who will take care of it? How would it be managed and maintained? Mm -hmm. uh, кто будет ответственным за этот объект? Кто будет о нем заботиться? Uh, и кто будет uh, следить за ним, эксплуатировать его? Mm -hmm. And uh, what effects could the intervention have that we have to be specially aware? And what will happen to it afterwards? And what will be its new second life? Uh -huh. uh, какие эффекты uh, будут вследствие нашего проекта, uh, о которых мы должны особенно беспокоиться, и uh, что произойдет после, и какая будет вторая жизнь у, этого, uh, у этой интервенции. Окей. The, that was the second part, and then I will just uh, talk uh, really fast. I don't know how much time do we have left, or what are you thinking? It's already eight over there, but if you want it, I can just go very fast through the project and then start the conversation. Or, um, or what do you think? Uh, Maria, what do you think? I, I think that uh, may, maybe fast, yeah, because it's already eight, yeah. Yeah, let's do it fast and yeah, without translation, just uh, everybody can ans ask questions later on. Okay. Okay, sure. I'm going to talk uh, about three couple of projects really fast. The first one is the Public Square Action Project. El Campo de la Cebada, which is the one I've, I've already mentioned, versus Almendro 3. Al Almendro 3. Almendro well, very short description of Cebada. It was an empty lot that they, it was uh, become a place to have a cultural life for one month and then it was closed again. And since uh, the citizens or the neighbors of that, of that space were like it to use it and have the opportunity to use it for a time, when it was closed again, they start to reclaim the use of it by the neighbors. So. Uh, Amazing project started from there, and uh, after a year they had the opportunity and the, I mean, the, they have the legal 
uh, advice, I mean, the legal opportunity to use the space for neighbor activities. So they started to manage it. This was an old uh, swimming pool that it was uh, tearing down when the, when it was the time when all these huge uh, projects and international competition on architecture was done. This was the swimming pool and closes the, uh, the market, the traditional market. And it was going to be a huge building for both of them. But then the crisis arrived and the building were left at, uh, uh, demolished in the, in the situation. So we started to do projects uh, by managing the space with the citizens. It was a group of people that uh, become experts on how to manage the different situations. These are going to be some images that illustrate all this process and how we infrastructure the space so the things can happen. What we first did for the project when it was, we got a little bit of money is just put some infrastructures into action, which was water. So the, the gardening and the urban farming could happen, put some uh, electricity so people could have cultural uh, things that we can uh, plug ourselves and have the opportunity to, to be uh, connected to that. And also a warehouse where we can, uh, uh, we can put tools and the equipment and the, in a safe space, which is that thing you see on the left. That was the basic infrastructures. Then from that, we start building things because we have uh, some materials that we could buy and some uh, uh, tools that, we, that was on the space. And we start building the sports area, the living areas, and all the furniture that was done, that was built, was built within the infrastructure with the people in the participatory process. And what happened is that this space has become a, a, a very well-known cultural space in the city because it uh, eliminates all the bureaucracy that you have to do to do your spectacle, such as this example here. And it eliminates all the barriers and the economic uh, issues for uh, an amazing uh, citizen cultural life to appear. So it established an agenda of cultural events. At the very beginning, the space was only open for these events, but then it ended up being so many events at the time, even different events happening at the same time in the space, which is, was uh, a, a challenge conflict to, to solve and to, to manage. This was a theater play with so many people with no any budget that they did. This is the aspect of the of the void, the, the urban void. This is has been after four years, and you could see how I mean the possibilities of the space were uh, exploiting, and there were so many different activities being held. This is the first uh, TEDx to be held in the street without any uh, budget TEDx uh, conferences. And then you could see the overall look of the space, which uh, you don't really understand what's going on, but there were so many things going on at the same time in the different parts of the space. This is another event that show up. So many different things. These are the three infrastructures that I talk about, the electricity, the water supply, the water uh, tank, and the warehouse where we can uh, store things. And this is the aspect on a normal day. Actually, this is a photograph on the day we were talking about the dome that you could see down there. And this is how it looks like in a normal day. People doing different things in different, there were a basketball going on, there were people taking care of the urban uh, farming. There were some people on the assembly discussing on the next projects. There were some people just hanging out in the sun. There were some people discovering the space for the first time. And there were many people that didn't even uh, notice that the space was there. And this is Almendro Tres. It's the same thing after 
Cebada, we kind of established with the government many, uh, many links. And then this was the opportunity with the new government that do the things in a completely different way. They told, they commissioned some of the architects and the urbanists and so many and different people, not only architects and urbanists that was, that was participating in Cebada to uh, come to this other empty pot, empty spot to do a similar project in a completely different context, very small and very uh, hidden, I mean, or not hidden, but installed into a very um, uh, living space. This is the space, how it was at the very beginning and how we in, did this project was a, a one year long process when we, where we started to talk with the neighbors and see what, uh, what they wanted to have and how they wanted to have the space. This is a, a meeting with the mayor of Madrid, Manuela Carmena, that we miss so much because she's gone and no, now we have a completely different party and completely different thinking about the, the process on, on the city and how participatory process could, could be held on the city. This is another meeting. It was a lot of thinking together what we wanted for the space and how we can make the space and how we can develop the spaces. This is the kids playing on the space. This is how it looked like at the end. This is another activity of the kids and this is the aspect that it has at the, at the end. Well, at the end, at the end of this first year of managing with the citizens, the project, what happened afterwards is as we Slide, slightly uh, get uh, a bit farther and farther from the management of the space since the neighbors were the one uh, managing it. And this is uh, the public square action projects. This is the two conflicts that I will mention super fast. The first one, what was not a conflict in El Campo de la Cebada? There were so many conflicts and there was the space and the, where we learn that from the conflicts, inhabiting the conflicts, we could achieve solutions and we could do things in a completely different way. Everything was a conflict. And just to talk about, there were so many concerts over there and uh, it was a big conflict with the people living so close to the square. So we established uh, uh, a very innovative process to do the song check uh, of the for the musicians and for the concerts to happen and when they came they instead of uh, testing uh, if the speaker works or not what they test is uh, the volume and we have this neighbor that, that never went to the square actually but he was always living on his terrace especially in summer weather in Madrid is very hot and he was always living in the terrace that he was uh, directly watching and directly listening on the first line to the to the square so he was always complaining he went down for complaining and after a while we did it was one of the main objectives not to bother the neighbors on the area one of the main objectives of the on the management of the space so he became the sound tester and every time somebody came into Cebada to play music we give Alfonso, the telephone of Alfonso, and they have to call Alfonso and see what was the volume that he it wasn't it wasn't bothering at him. The second conflict on the on Almendro Tres, it was very interesting also that the neighbors have to be being taken away from the design of a participatory process because what happened over there is that all the neighbors at the beginning that arrived and that they wanted to be part of the process, they were many uh, families and many parents and what they really they claimed the space to be it was a place for the little kids especially from zero to four years old to play because it has this uh, uh, gathering and the limitation uh, from the outside and there were not many public spaces like that so what we have to tell them is that if they want a space to be for the kids, we have to invite the kids into the table of designing and thinking what it was going to be like and what was going to happen in the design of the space. And what happened is that the little kids with the fathers, they have a completely different attitude. So what we have to do is let the fathers and the, I mean the parents, the fathers and the mothers apart a little bit 
from the table and let the protagonism to the kids to start thinking what they want for the space. Actually, out of that, what it came to was very interesting because the what the kids wanted, it was like a blue elephant furniture and the, they wanted boats, pirate boats all over, and they wanted so many things that it was very difficult to convince the father to have them, the parents to have them. So what we did, it was we empty the space a lot. We leave everything to happen, all the imaginatory process of the kids to happen, just with a little bit of elements, as you have seen, so that everything could of the coming out of the imagination of a little kid could happen. Two tools that we learn is the infrastructure in the public space could make the citizens to understand how it works and could make the citizens to inhabit this infrastructure and start using it and start managing it because the infrastructure is open to the public so they can understand how it works and they can understand how to work with them and they can learn of one to one, one of one word right, and they can be part of the of the project. Instead, instead of designing what would it look like and what is going to happen, what we design is the infrastructure that will let the people decide and that will let the people interact with this infrastructure so that many things could happen. And the second tool is the mind the gap, is that what we use between the first and the second project was like. Mind the gap is what it says on the subway in, uh, in uh, London. Be aware of the distance between the, the platform and the train. And we use this sentence to say, be aware of the distance between the agents collaborating on this process, especially the agents that are far away from each other. In this case, the citizens that wanted to reclaim the space for doing their own activities and the government that was the owner and they have to allow the activities to grow. And what we do is we try to make bridges that can get these parties closer and to discuss and to see all the point of view, try to put all the people in the table to think and to reflect about the process and the project. And my question or our question is how to transfer the specific and situated apprenticeships to other locations and communities. How to transfer all the knowledge, and all the tools and all the things that you have learned from these situated, very local apprenticeships to another completely different location into another completely different communities. Well, I go further, I go very fast through these two ones. This is the second couple. The second couple that I call um, the, operation, the urban operations. I'm going to talk about handmade urbanism and Operación Irminio. Handmade urbanism, as the name says, is how to make urban design with your hands. And we try to... Uh, I start with this project by doing these workshops, these university workshops and uh, participatory workshops with neighborhoods to start furnishing the, the surroundings of the space. This was like an intensive days of working and we realized something very important that is from these uh, decisions that you were making very fast for building in, the, in these workshops, so many impacts on the outside, on the other scale were, uh, were it was producing impact in a completely different scale for us. These are a few examples. We have been doing handmade urbanism in different locations and different situations, trying to bring those uh, expertise into another situation and uh, working with completely different communities. This is uh, how, we, how we said that we really work with hands to, to do the urban design and the urban thinking. This is not only working, but also thinking and reflecting and, and making the community at the same time that works on the place. This is some of the other handmade urbanism projects. This is the first one we did building the, uh, uh, I don't know how to say that word. Um, the, I'm sorry. 
we have to make a cinema, an auditorium, making the first auditorium at El Campo de la Cebada. As you could see, there was still nothing there. There were no chairs. And we have uh, the first cinema projection. And uh, we accomplished to do this uh, handmade uh, urban auditorium for the people with this uh, uh, community that we held a workshop with. Uh, from uh, Bogota, Universidad Javeriana students and teacher, and thanks to them, we could have a place to sit to to watch the first uh, the first uh, projection in the in the space. By luck, luckily, we have some chairs over there that you could see that uh, arrive on time. This is another example of handmade urbanism, and this is quite. The second project I'm, talk, I'm going to talk about is Operación Arminio. <coughs> it's a completely different thing. But we work with the government also for a pavilion for the sustainable fair of uh, Spain, where all the different uh, uh, administrations of Spain and the different uh, cities and uh, provinces of Spain will come together to talk about sustainability. And uh, it was held in Madrid and they wanted to make us a pavilion out of it. But uh, there were no, this is the meetings where we designed it. There were so many people involved and so few resources. So what we did is well, we talked to the government and, uh, and uh, convinced them that, they, that we need more than economic resources that, that were very low. And we need material resources, we need human resources, we need uh sustainable resources we need material resources we need so many other things that we have to uh, accomplish and we have to get and go and find it and when we and when we went to the to the warehouse of urban all urban furniture that it was that it was uh taken apart because it was broken or because it was uh, not in the best conditions and ended up in this huge warehouse where uh, we met uh, Herminio. It was this person that was taking wood care, very good care of the, uh, all the materials. Here in these pictures, on the right, you could see the new benches, and on the left, the pieces of old benches that went back in this warehouse. This is the pavilion that we did. So it's up the new uh, mobile city uh, bike public transport and talks about also uh, the urban gardening uh, spaces that it was being uh, settled and it was being achieved to have a legal form for them to operate. This is how it looked like. This is how well, another view of the pavilion. And this is what happened afterwards. We convinced, I mean, we, in, in the project, the thought of what to do with the materials afterwards, what to do with the pavilion afterwards. It used to be a bench, then it became a pavilion, and then it had to become another completely different thing. This was the first goal of the project. It was all the pieces of the pavilion have to go afterwards to another public facility, another cultural center or civic center in Madrid. And we have a very good uh, communication with many of them and we achieved to install this thing. This is in Media Lab Prado, an innovation uh, center for, citizen, for citizens. And this is in a public school where this little piece of the project went. Some others went in a different part. This is Herminio, the person we were talking about and why her, his, uh, concern and his good care of the old materials make all this project possible. And this is why we, in uh, acknowledging him, we call this Operación Herminio because he was the, the person that make everything possible. He was working alone in this old uh, material warehouse and he was super happy to think about what will happen to the, to the project afterwards. And the other thing that happened is that we established with the network of urban farming in Madrid. It was a big network and we were working with them. 
not only in the pavilion, but thinking on how all these materials, these are not the materials from the pavilion, these are more the materials of the, of the warehouse, how we can do, or how, how we can um, achieve that they could uh, establish a relationship with uh, the urban, uh, garden, the urban farming area that wanted in Madrid. So we established uh, through the network of urban garden in Madrid, they contact the all the urban garden and urban uh, farming spaces, and uh, they want if they want it, they can ask for materials to build their own uh, facilities. These are some examples of what they did, and uh, what I wanted to talk about is that we also did a manual, which is very important to transfer all this knowledge from uh, an amazing builder that was with us and all the knowledge of the people from the network of uh, Madrid uh, urban uh, farming. And uh, we wanted to transfer that to everyone. So we designed these uh, manuals so that uh, it could be built, not by us, because it was very difficult to be in every uh, farming place in the city, but by the people uh, inhabiting all those places. And with this, these manuals and the materials coming from the warehouse, they could achieve to have many different uh, uh, projects and many uh, from, from the uh, collecting areas or, or planting areas to uh, benches to be there or uh, composters or all the, all the facilities they needed. So the two conflicts I'm going to talk about is the first one is the no resources at all and how to understand resources, not only economically, as I talk about, but also in terms of uh, social resources, uh, uh, digital resources, communication resources, material resources, network resources. There are many other resources that you could put in the charts and you can put in the project and you can get instead of thinking that everything has to come from a budget or from a, a economic resource that in this case we didn't have any and we kind of solved the situation by getting many other many other uh, resources and uh, the other uh, conflict that we start to to realize is was that uh, we were affecting the city from the smallest construction detail scale. From a very little thing, we have to be very aware that the city could be, uh, could be affected, that it could become from this very small scale, could become an operation, an urban operation, not only a tactical small urbanist uh, project, but a big thing. The tools that we learn is the second life is since uh, those projects over there, we understood that the, uh, to have a more sustainable way of thinking and designing, we have to design things not to last for one time, for one life, but to let the materials have different lives. And through this, we, we have been learning about the memory of the materials and the memory they have and looking at them and feeling them and understanding how they work you could see how they work before and learn from that to get to know what could be the design afterwards. And the second tool is the non-inauguration process uh, in, uh, in comparison of uh, the second project I was talking about, Operación Herminio, that it was a whole uh, inauguration of that project with the government and stuff. The other ones, we said that we know we never inaugurate these projects or we inaugurate them every day because we keep on building and we keep this, uh, the spaces open while building, inviting everybody to be part of the process. It's not that we close for works and then when we are done, we open to the public. We think that uh, celebrating the city and uh, the possibility of building the city together, it's something that it has not to be one day when everything is perfect and when everything is brightening and when everything is uh, could be celebrated that is normally are and celebrated but some people by some people on the front line and some people on the back line 
we kind of think that it has to be the opportunity to celebrate for everyone in completely different ways and at any time. The question, how to work with public urban administration so that they can adopt successful experimental prototypes to become standard models in their institutional institute, right? This is what by reason, sorry, in their institutional communities. Institutional communities. Sorry, how to work with public urban administrations so that they can adopt successful experimental prototypes to become standard model in their institutions and communities. How these things that we're doing in a, as, as an experimentation, such as Operación Herminio, such as what we do with the urban farming in Madrid, how can that methodologies and that experimental prototypes become a standard based on the successful of the, I mean, based on the success of these actions? And really fast, I'm gonna go through the last uh, two couple of projects that uh, I call them um, the upgraded context situated knowledge. This is Inteligencias Colectivas. It's an online platform of uh, informal design or design not coming from the standard or not coming from the normal way or designers could think coming from the context coming from the ancient and historic knowledge of the spaces and of the places of the building these are uh, uh, and the, the base of this uh, platform it's a catalog where we find all this intelligence all over the world and we upload it into this platform so that it could be uh, used by everyone is a is a way of sharing uh, in a creative commons way and understanding which uh, project come from where and how to do it and how to build it some other spaces this is our catalog of the archive this is the second part it's an app it's when we get to know uh, a bit more about all these details and all this innovation and intelligences we draw it and uh, upload all the plans and all the schematic uh, ways to build things so that people can actually really build it and not just watch at the archive. Other things we do, and, and the third part of the project is the prototyping. It's that we, with all these designs, all these details we find with some other perhaps, uh, in so many places, we make uh, interventions in uh, we make uh, uh, urban uh, tactical urbanism and we put them into places into many different places in the places that we could uh, manage and what we do is assembling many of these intelligences in many of these uh, knowledge into one single piece these are the prototypes the assembling prototypes what we also do and we, we also, uh, the fourth part of the project is the human network. For us, it's very important to understand that the designers, the thinkers, and the people that are, are really doing and pushing forward all these innovations are not being thought as designers. It's just people from wherever they are, their context, trying to innovate and trying to do things in a better way. Because the Realities change because the lack of resources, because many different aspects. These people here is the human network in the north of Spain where they have a big challenge to change their production, their farming production into something uh, more uh, natural and more uh, sustainable. And they have a lot of knowledge, hidden knowledge in the fields that we kind of uh, connect through these human networks and start to make a conversation between them to accomplish different ways of talk, talking about things. And the last uh, part is the map. This is the many places that we've been working on where we kind of call Inteligencias uh, Colectivas uh, a place for situating the knowledge. We understand that it's completely different, something being built and the knowledge coming from a context and we have to learn from that context to understand 
what's the real design, what's the real uh, success or intelligence on the design in order to bring that uh, knowledge to and relocate it in somewhere else. For us, it's very important to understand the situation and the context very well and the, uh, the knowledge on the context so, we can, so that we can understand or we can style this knowledge in another prototype in somewhere else. This is some of the prototypes we did. This was our office in Madrid. This was the, all the intelligentsia that we assembly to make this uh, final project. This is another one in, in Manila, in Philippines, that we learned from the local uh, uh, moving uh, restaurants that they were stalling everywhere. And we kind of upgrade one of them by installing all these innovations and all these uh, things that we find around. This is another one in Lagos. This is the one I show you, the Sage one, with the tissues that we're using and the materials that we're using and the techniques and the, that we could use, the, the building techniques they, they have and they know how to do over there. In this case, they knew how to bend and it was very easy to bend the metal tubes. So that's why we use this technology to infrastructure this public space. This is in Colombia and here we were using how the, the palm tree could make uh, uh, the roof and the angles, they told us the angle has to be 45 degrees. So we kind of play with that angle so that we can achieve another form. This is another one with the same logic and uh, some other knowledge is that we install together. This is a dry bathroom that we install and learn how to manage. These are the drawers so that everybody can build it and understand how it works on the website. And this is some other projects we did all over. This is the second life of the first project you were seeing, the office become another space very close to what it was. It was in an interior and then it became in the exterior, so a little bit of change. And this is the second project I'm going to talk about. It is or the last project. I don't know how much time do we have left. I'm gonna go super fast if you think it's, it's all right. Yeah, yeah, let, let's do it fast. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah. we obviously like uh, everything. I mean, the lectures were very cool, but yeah, uh, we, we've out of time. So um, let's do it fast and then the questions. But we like it really, really, really. Well, this is the, uh, the last project I'm going to talk about. It's called FOI, which, uh, which means Furniture Urban Alphabet. This is a, the, a reference of a project we did, a, a project uh, that one of our teachers did long ago that it was uh, bringing these huge letters into a museum. They build it somewhere and they, they transport it through the, through the roads to where the really location was. And we kind of did the same with our projection, our furniture urban alphabet. It was uh, for a pavilion in Madrid city that it was inaugurated in, in 2016. And uh, it was how to use the materials in an educational experience. A pavilion that its materiality, materiality shows to the world how Madrid's environmental politics policies are based on sustainability, second lives, social cohesion, encounter, open source, and participation. After that, the project uh, keep on growing in 2017, and the World Forum for Urban Violence and Education for Peace added three other letters, which was peace, now we have MAD and peace. And then in 2017, Imagina Madrid, another project to imagine different uh, possibilities for Madrid uh, public spaces, added uh, nine, other, uh, nine other letters and nine other uh, furniture to this, so that you could have Imagina Madrid 
imagine Madrid in all these letters. This is a combination of a letter that could be the background of a, of a, this was the pavilion. This is how the construction, and it could, this is how it works. And for some people, it was the perfect background. For some people, it was the uh, lighting uh, for the urban space. For us, it was many things. These are the details that we make it. Also, reusing the materials as the last pavilion. And in this case, with the light bulbs of the illumination of Madrid, also the woods, and just adding this simple and very easy to build metal structures flexible and easy to move this is some of the picture of the process so you could see the community using and uh, developing the same logics that we have learned through all this uh, time working with the government with the environmental uh, uh, part of the government this is how you transport and style them sometimes you can uh, make them raw. This is uh, moving them from one place to another. They have served in many different spaces of the city for many different things. And this is uh, the word uh, that uh, the project have to finish, which is magic. And, uh, and it's something just something to say that the la well, I will just talk about it later. And this is how the conflicts arrive, working with a very distant world on essential local issues. This is one of the first conflicts that we find with Inteligencias Colectivas, how to work for a very distant and completely different situation on essential matters in, local, uh, in uh, different localities. The second conflict was the versatility of a design for an unknown context, how to build, how to think on the design of something that you don't really know where it's gonna end up. And with two tools that we develop, is the assembling design prototypes. It's how to assemble all the designs, all the intelligences from many spaces, from many places that we found into one prototype or into one design so it can profit from all these different things and they can start to talk together, the different details and the different solutions that you have for the same uh, prototype and from the same design as is an assembly of different logics they put together to work together and to be uh, learning one from the other. In the second tool is the multi-purpose design. Is this, the designs that we, that we do have always many different purposes. In this case, was lighting, was uh, places to stay, was a background for a, for a political enactment. It was many different things. So as it goes to different spaces, it can offer different uh, possibilities to the space where they arrive and this is how to design it's a, it's like a, a tool we we ended up to designing for uh, for things that you don't really know where they are going to end up and the question is how to work with uh, public urban administration so that they can adopt to oh no 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 fuck this is this is wrong sorry this question it's it's bad, uh, bad uh, sentence. The question that I wanted to ask is, uh, uh, um, how to keep life and valuable the archive so that the projects are not only feeding the archive, but they can also emerge from it. That was it, thank you. Okay, you can thank translate you. now if you want. <laughs> yes, yes, the lecture is uh, great and uh, we see that uh, people are writing that uh, it's so great that they want us to invite you once more and that there was so much material for not for one lecture but for three lectures. So that we, we actually lost a couple of people at the end just a couple of minutes ago. Uh, several people were gone because uh, obviously everything was just but just they didn't have much time uh, but and uh, several people asking me they couldn't get to the conference because they didn't have time but they want the recording so anyway I think it was a very successful let's uh, go to um, questions uh, ah, first of all uh, two people are asking in the link to the site that you have shown with this archive, if you if you have it, 
uh, where uh, intelligence this, collectiva? All this sure. catalog of these projects. Okay, sure. I'm getting there. And I'll just translate what I've said to others. Я быстро сказал, что все было здорово, всем понравилось, все хотят еще позвать. Сейчас придем к вопросам, и я попросила прислать ссылку на на архив. Пока что посмотрю вопросы. А, Маша, ты там что-то спрашивала про то, что остановлено не... Так, надо ссылку сохраняем себе, копируем чтобы она не потерялась в чате, я себе ее сохраняю, чтобы, если кому интересно, потом а, можно было... А, ой, я Маше пошлю ее. Да, вот. да. Первое, что у меня открылось, так, чтобы не потерять и всем прислать. А, Маша, ты тут задавала вопрос, тебе ответила Аврора, она ответила, можно не задавать, да, или как? Подожди. Давайте после, Про... да, после ответов Аврора уже те, которые не отвечены. Да, так. хорошо. Да, поняла. А, There is a question how you invite resources for interventions, who usually finances them. Кто обычно финансирует ваши проекты? Хороший вопрос. That's a good question. Could you, could you uh, repeat the question, sorry? Uh, where do you usually find uh, the budget financing for the project? Oh, that's a... Uh, the, there are many different ways. There are... Many times we, at the beginning, we thought in, in um, public, uh, public fundings and public, uh, uh, how do you say those, when they have these uh, open calls for projects and you can uh, get money from the government to do these things. But uh, that's uh, not uh, enough for us. There was this, uh, it is one resource and you have to find more. What we said is that you have to be as creative as you are on your designs, you have to be that creative on finding ways of putting all the economic layer on the, on the table. And uh, many times it's just asking, building big uh, tissues, building big networks of people, it's very important, uh, uh, evolving all the, all the, the context and the relationship you have with the different ambient and the different people in the in the city in the different uh aspect in the city is very important because many times you find resources when you are not expected to so you have to be very uh, aware of of uh, the lack of resources and where you could find things and how you can help things to do things so the people will help you to do and develop your projects. In participatory process, many times we found that the, the many things are already there. You just have to build them and make them work together with another situation and put them in the, in the solution-based uh, table so they can be taken care of. I mean, they can, they can be taken in, into notion. So it's a matter of being creative and uh, finding resources everywhere it's not only about economic resources remember it's about so many resources and many times when you are about to do a project because you have everything settled up but the economic part it's way more easy to get the economic part if you're always waiting to have the economic part to begin process it's very difficult and there also we work in many processes that have been already going on and you just have to find money to work on them for a little time and for a little uh, project and what we also do is when, when you get money to develop a project you profit from the money as much as you want and you enroll on that project that you get money for many other projects and many other people that need resources and don't have it opening the resources for everyone sharing as much as you want your projects your ideas your thoughts your knowledge your resources your conflicts and your everything and uh, hoping that uh, many things will go back when sharing. 
I will translate very, very quickly okay. for everybody. Uh, um, конечно же, есть различные open call, какие-то конкурсы от фондов, от правительств, в которых можно участвовать, uh, но вообще на самом деле это довольно креативный процесс поиска финансирования, и здесь важны какие-то аспекты, а на самом деле uh, важен аспект связи между людьми, uh, mm -hmm. то есть значит, надо постоянно наращивать эти связи, и можно найти ресурсы там, где ты даже не ожидал. И, и очень часто можно обнаружить, в особенности при соучаствующем проектировании, что а, ресурсы уже есть, вот просто нужно их заметить, увидеть, и еще очень важно, когда делать какой-то, а, еще важно не ждать а, для старта какого-то проекта финансирования, то есть если ты можешь начать только если у тебя будет финансирование, то не очень хорошо, нужно как-то стараться а, придумать, как можно сделать так, чтобы проект стартовал, и а, нужно стараться а, дел, ну, делиться своими а, полученными какими-то в этом проекте знаниями, всеми ресурсами, как-то э, делиться с ними широкой публикой, надеясь, что э, будет фидбэк, и вам как бы это вернется столицей. Угу. Угу. Надя, там вопрос от а... был, э, э, который над Авророй, вот 747. Э, как поддерживать компанию? А... So how to support communities to make tactical urbanism activities by themselves? So, so as I understand, how to make how to make uh, such situation when uh, communities can uh, start to make these things on their own? Как поддерживать community, чтобы они сами были инициаторами тактического урбанизма? We used to to talk about this on the term of uh, the architect as uh, superheroes or architect as normal uh, citizens. For us, it, we are not Superman. We're not arriving to a place to solve things, to tell the people what to do. We thought more about our work, more about what the doctors, we are not this doctor that is gonna make a big intervention on your body and helps you to keep alive. We are more of a doctor that is gonna accompany you during the process so you could understand how to avoid being in a bad condition. It's more about being close to the people and accompanying the process instead of being in the office giving solutions to them or giving manuals or giving methodologies that works for you in another time. It's more about a lot, I mean, a lot that we, get, that we understood is how to make those projects uh, how to make a space for the accompaniment on the project instead of starting like what do we design no go to the place start to talk with the people and let them free feel that you're accompanying on that accompaniment the trust appear trust is very important in the participatory process is one i mean i'll say is the most important thing when they start to trust you and you're not the one solving the problems you're the one helping them to start the conversation on how to solve problems, how to achieve things, how to move things forward. And then being aware that you're not gonna always gonna be there. So a lot of the knowledge uh, have to be spread up and have to be uh, taken by some other. That's why we always build learning environments so that we can learn from the solutions, but also many people can learn. We're open for that from other people. So for us, it's very important to understand that accompanying, it's letting people learn so that they could afterwards be the ones doing that or in, uh, managing other process in other location, in other moments of their lives and just be in contact with them as a, as a normal person, not a person that is like a super designer. This is very tricky because it, it takes a lot of time but when you have to design, make a very good design of timing on this type of process so that you could be accompanying in the important moments and you can be learning in the important moments with the people around and with the neighbors and with everybody involved in the process and in the project. And also another thing that works is bringing not only the architects or the urbanism and the citizens, bringing other agents as the bigger is the group, the more agents are on the group, the less they're gonna feel when one is gone 
that they can, uh, they, they can uh, do it alone. You're never alone. You always have many different, uh, a variety of agents, of urban agents uh, working. And also providing a space of conversation where nobody is the expert and somebody is the amateur. It's no, it's, we're learning together because we don't know how to do things. And we don't really understand, and we don't really, we have to learn together how to solve the problems. It's not that we are bringing and super specialist that is going to tell you what to do. He could be interesting to be part of the project. He could help you in a way, but he's not giving you all the answers. That is, the answers will be built through the process together, learning, sharing, and trusting that you can do it. Uh, that, uh Сейчас тоже быстро переведу. Uh, yeah, I'll do it very quickly. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, uh, um, Во-первых, мы изначально не позиционируем себя uh, как архитекторы супергерои, которые сейчас придут и решат все проблемы. Мы позиционируем себя как нормальные жители, тоже, тоже жители, как бы горожане в этом плане. Um, то есть мы не хотим uh, быть как доктор, который придет и сейчас даст uh, таблетку, которая вылечит все ваше тело, а мы стараемся вас, uh, вам помогать, как бы быть вашими таким, некими компаньонами в процессе, uh, быть uh, как бы ближе к людям, не давать каких-то решений заранее, а вместе разрабатывать все. Uh, и мы почему как раз создаем uh, такие обучающие пространства, uh, потому что мы хотим сами, опять-таки, учиться на конкретном кейсе вместе с жителями и вместе все разрабатывать. И еще очень важно, что uh, uh, лучше привлекать как можно больше различных стейкхолдеров, как бы агентов, как называет Луиса, uh, проекта, потому что uh, тогда, uh, во-первых, будут разные взгляды, разные умения, не будет такого, что один человек куда-то uh, ушел, так сказать, отпал от проекта, и проект остановился. Uh, всегда будет ощущение, что вы не одни, и есть кем поделиться, кто будет продвигать проект. Uh, ну и самое главное — это доверие, uh, делиться друг другом идеями и uh, вот такое от открытое общение. Mm -hmm. uh, so this was a quick uh, translation. Let's go to another question. So we have asked about what was Anton? Anton uh, how do you manage big? Uh, a good question. How do you manage big participation meetings? Do you have sociologists in your team? О, oh, oh, sorry. Uh, как вы обычно проводите большие встречи, если у вас uh, социолог? So do you have sociologists who want to uh, the big uh, participatory sessions? Uh, we, in the team, we collaborate with uh, sociologists, especially Aurora is collaborating with the sociologists from the uh, well. Uh, professors and teachers at the university and researchers uh, in, a big, in a big level and uh, they're very interested in urban sociology and uh, urban process and we've been working with many people to on how to do this process there is one thing very very important after the trust in participation is the communication communication is vital good communication process and also the communication in the assemblies and how to put order into that and how to manage all those things. So we've been not only sociologists, but uh, experts in communication and uh, experts in, in devices that uh, helps all these things to work on. And uh, many people that could uh, go through the process with us so we can learn from them. It's very difficult. The big participatory process are, are very difficult, but uh, also there are many interactive ways of doing things. And you can do by answering questions, you can do by putting those questions on the boards, you can have meetings, you can record those meetings, you can go back with the questions and show ups in different places. You, there are many methodologies that you can uh, afford. There is one case that I was talking about that it was a big, vast territory, very difficult to, to uh, circulate through it. So there were not many connections between the people. So we got to go to every single space. 
and go with this blackboard showing the answers and showing the thought and making transparent all these decisions so that other people can look at them, can could know what it was there, use the digital media to facilitate all these things and uh, uh, I don't know, try to have those spaces of governance as much open as you could. When it becomes a huge group, then it needs a, a big organization and uh, it, it needs good uh, techniques of communication and good uh, structure of, of the assembly and good uh, uh, taking notes of what he was there, taking notes of what people wanted to say, but they didn't say it, uh, making it into another platform so that people can continue the discussion and uh, facilitating as much as you can all those process. Never being the protagonist. The protagonist is always the knowledge of the citizens. The protagonist is always the project that you want to develop. The protagonist is the innovation that is being held on the project. And uh, just letting those things to be part of the, of the project and of the conversation. I don't know, I'll say, also, it helps absolutely to have uh, sociologists that, that we are usually working with, but it's, sometimes you don't have them, and sometimes you have to be in a huge community that wants to talk about it, and they're looking at you, and you better disappear and let them understand that they have to talk between them. They have to talk so that their thoughts are being uh, communicated and uh, being are uh, getting to the other parties that maybe want to listen, that maybe want to uh, know what they're thinking, or maybe they have another opportunity in another moment to continue with the conversation. If that is space that in a lot doesn't allow all the voices to be taken in consideration. Mm -hmm. A quick translation. А, так, сейчас. А, да, конечно, мы взаимодействуем с социологами и исследователями, в особенности Аврора, а, потому как а, коммуникация — это прям жизненно необходимо для а, процессов, проектов, в которых участвующие проектирование применяется. А, и это очень сложный процесс, и а, есть много разных методов в соучаствующем проектировании, да, как выстроить общение, а, это и какие-то вопросы, и а, когда ответы клеят на стену, на доске пишут, как в проекте, который показывал Луис, а, тут может быть много разных методов. И, например, в случае с проектом, где вот была как раз черная доска с надписями, приходилось ходить а, по многим-многим-многим точкам, потому что вот эти все сообщества были рассосредоточены. И потом приходилось это приводить еще какие-то цифровые методы, чтобы диалог продолжился, и жители могли общаться уже вне этой, этих встреч. И тут как раз вот важно действительно найти поле, где жители могут продолжить общение, чтобы коммуникация не прервалась, и чтобы они не смотрели на архитектора, как на того, кто сейчас даст ответы, а сейчас что-то им скажет, они должны понять, что они должны обсуждать прежде всего между собой проект, и а, как раз вот это вот нужно продвинуть, чтобы это осталось. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, so, uh, uh, I think we have uh, one more question. Uh, what is... Кто согласовывает следить за объектами, да? The question is who... Uh, uh, I how to translate согласовывает. Uh, who approves, who, uh, first of all, who approves the objects uh, that they will stay? Uh, uh, for example, uh, so that it would be legal for them to appear, first of all. And after all, who manages them? Uh, you've already mentioned that um, there are people who can fix, uh, not, not people who can fix, but that citizens can fix objects. But uh, is there probably also some manager of the space who uh, appears during this process, the citizen who will look after the objects? Um, there, uh, Everything shows up on the, from the context. There is this uh, 
lecture that I love at one time about this Argentinian uh, architect that uh, Alfredo Yar, that uh, he started the conversation, he started his lecture with a black uh, single frame saying context is everything. And uh, we kind of find very close to that thing. On the context, you will find everything. Probably somebody is managing things. It, the, the, the management of the city and of the urban uh, issues is not only being held by the government. It's always have different layers of management. There's people that knows about the place because they inhabit the place a lot. A lot. And since they, they don't manage, they don't make the rules, they don't make the laws, but they know how it works. And maybe they interfere because they know the time when it's uh, accessible and they use that time and know the time when it's not accessible. And that there are many different people that get to understand how things work and what's the the how the the city is operating and how all the spaces and and it doesn't have to do always with the rules it doesn't have to be always with the laws the laws are there but there are many spaces especially on on urban uh, on tactical urbanism that the, this frame is a bit uh, open a bit more open so and when it's a bit more open, the, the way it's managed, it changed in an informal uh, uh, atmosphere. And it's, in informal scenarios, this is, this is so obvious. Why, when I'm now in Mexico, this is so obvious that the laws and the government are not the one ruling and not the one, I mean, are the one supposed to rule and establish the rules. But those rules are inhabited by the different scenarios in a completely different way. Informal settlements or informal neighborhoods means that they don't establish themselves in, the, in a legal way. So from the beginning, they're illegal. And how do you manage an illegal thing? A, a government cannot manage because it, it normally matters in, the, in, in legal terms how the laws, they cannot go further or go outside of that. So on those scenarios, there are other, uh, other people thinking and other people managing and other ways of managing things. So there's always somebody manage. There's this thing that I said always about, about Mexico that nobody, I mean, that not everybody knows that the people selling in the street, there is no, any single person selling on the street, the vendors that are selling on the street, that, is, that doesn't give uh, some money and that is installed in a regulation, that is informal regulation and methodology. None of them. There's not a single one. Maybe there's one crazy that he go by himself without attending the informal laws, but everyone else, which means a lot of people they pay to somebody who is managing the street vendors and the spaces and they take care of your space and they take care of the security and all of that. And the managing, there's a hidden person that is managing all that, but you have to deal with them. If you want to do something in the street, you got to know who is managing all these processes. This is not every time. There are some times when there's no vendors over there. But the time they are there, there's somebody managing and there's some rules established specifically for that moment. And there's people around that, can, that you can talk to and that you can understand inhabiting the space, living, talking to the people, communicating so that you can, they, they can trust in you, who are you to give you the information or why should they give the information and talk to you who are. And if you kind of uh, develop those trustees uh, communications then you can start to understand how things work on the context and then you can understand how who is ruling in I mean all the agents that are ruling at the same time most of the time it's not only one aspect of ruling especially in, in some of the projects that I said like uh, in the one the kids that, that were making the rules in my end 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, before translating, I wanted to add that uh, this is also the case with uh, people selling something and having uh, some somebody behind them is also, I think, uh, for Russia too, in some cases. And also that uh, when we were doing our own project uh, with, uh, at the new residential district for us in St. Petersburg, we also found out that there was the one very, very great uh, woman who was managing the courtyard. She uh, looked uh, af uh, after the landscape design. She talked to the managing company and she, she and other residents made an alcohol shop move from the first floor of the building because they didn't like that their uh, building had uh, alcohol there being sold been sold so i mean they were managing it who would imagine I, I mean i've never heard of such case that citizens were uh not uh, happy with some uh shop uh, being uh at the, on the first floor of their building and making the shop go i mean she, she, if you uh, talk to her understand that she she's the great manager of the court yet and, and maria and anton i'm talking about olga Lvovna. <laughs> yes you you got it. So translation. So translation. Uh, so, uh, если говорить о uh, том, кто отвечает за пространство, о том, кто согласовывает какие-то аспекты, то на самом деле uh, вот, uh, uh, мне нравится, uh, сказал Луис, uh, фраза одного аргентинского архитектора Альфредо. What was the surname? Yeah. Alfredo Jar. Yeah. Альфредо Диа, ага, который сказал, что контекст — это все, и на самом деле это правда, потому что в контексте все можно, в окружающем проект контексте можно найти все. Там может быть и менеджер пространства, да, тот, кто отвечает за него, и это не обязательно правительство, и менеджмент пространства, и согласование каких-то вещей — это не всегда именно законы, потому что именно жители, во-первых, именно жители знают, когда пространство может быть доступным, и когда вообще там что-то можно делать. Может быть, не знают, что там закрыто сейчас, но туда можно попасть вечером, например. И плюс, например, в том, в Мехико, например, ну, как во многих других городах есть неформальные какие-то районы, да, и, в которые, в общем-то, не управляются правительством, у них свои внутренние законы. Например, все уличные продавцы там, а, они а, кому-то платят за то, что они могут там продавать. То есть есть человек, который стоит как бы за ними, и именно он согласует, кто тут что-то продает. И вот а, как раз, а, а, если посмотреть на контекст, занимаясь любым проектом, всегда можно найти того, кто на самом деле за все отвечает и, и кто может помочь как-то с этим проектом. А я, соответственно, привела примеры из нашей... Во-первых, я сказала, что в России тоже бывает, что действительно все, кто что-то продают, например, всякие уж бабули у метро точно, с кем-то должны это согласовывать. И у нас... А про менеджеров пространства я сказала, что на Парнасе, когда мы делали проект, то выяснилось, что там есть вот местный житель Ольга Львовна, которая заботится о всем дворе, она прям настоящий менеджер пространства, она с управляющей компанией взаимодействует, она и озеленяет двор, и помогает праздники проводить, и более того, жители объединились и, и выгнали <laughs> с первого этажа алкогольный магазин, потому что они считали, что ну, у них очень хороший дом, и они не хотели бы, чтобы там были подобного рода заведения. Кто бы мог подумать, что жители могут, вот я про такое не слышала никогда, то есть она полноценный менеджер пространства. Uh, so I think we have a very, very last uh, uh, question, because obviously the conversation goes good and the lecture was perfect, but I think we are out of time, so if well, you... Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, I mean, if Luis, if you... Yeah, if you if you don't mind, so last question, yeah, and then uh, we will end up. Uh, obviously, you also uh, have uh, to go. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, two hours. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yes, you need to drink at least. Uh, no, go go on. Uh, if you need to have a quick drink, or was the last question? Okay. No yes. Uh, uh, how you understand? How do you understand that the project is successful? Как вы понимаете, что проект успешный? <laughs> yes, let's wait for him for a second. He needs to drink uh, oh, uh, down. Yeah, I, I, I understand uh -huh. the question. So, uh, how do you understand that the project is successful? 
Как вы понимаете, что проект был успешным? Uh, that's a very tricky question. Um, there is this uh, way of uh, measuring things. Oh, Aurora, with Aurora is over there. There is always uh, indicators that you can that you could uh, try to measure in different projects, and so you can compare and you can establish a, in this comparison which one is higher than the other. But this is also uh, accounting methodologies. Uh, we also believe that uh, these have to be, this way of uh, evaluating, uh, it has to be not only in the quantitative, uh, but also in the qualitative. Qualitative indicators, it's more describing what do you understand that is successful, what did you understand, what was the project, and why something is more successful than other things. That's the quality of things instead of the quantity of things. Indicators gives you the opportunity to, if you share some other projects indicators, you can compare those projects, but, uh, but there's no only that, and there's sometimes that things cannot be measured. It's just more how do you feel it, and how do you communicate, and how you make a narrative about them, what brings the value into the project and what brings the, the importance into a success project. A success is, I don't know, there's many, many ways of thinking why something is a success. Sometimes it's because people are happy with what you're doing. It doesn't have to be measured. It's just people telling you, I like that, that saying something. Because people is learning. I don't know, in, in, in uh, there is also a more effective, more emotional things. If you go back to a place, it's because something happened that you like it and you want to be there again. So if people are coming back to the place, you're doing something successful. If people are not coming back, ice. If people are leaving, it's more people leaving than coming in. There is ways of, of measuring that. It doesn't mean that you have to be counting all the time. Counting is good. And the, the data is good for all this process, especially now that we have all this data analysis thing. But there is also the qualitative part, which is very important. And that part is uh, to write, to think, and to communicate about the project and about what do you think it went well and what do you think it went wrong? More about if it was successful, it's I think it went well. Why? Because this and this, because we try this and this happens. And then I think this could happen in another moment. And there's, you find some keys of the project or some little success that could be if you have a lot of them. And then if you have, you could actually long afterwards talk about that something is a success. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, bef before, uh, sorry, so uh, Okay, sorry, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, before translating, I just wanted to add that we also experienced this in our project. Uh, so when we organized a local festival on Parnas, uh, we were asked by the managing company, like how many likes did you have at the posts on the internet, how many people visited and a lot of this. Uh, quantitative stuff and we're like oh we wanted we had to count this uh, all the things because they uh, paid for the festival and we had to give the all this uh, information for them but for us obvious thing was what people said just like when everybody asked like uh, will there be another festival like that I want to visit will you do the things more or when someone said like my kids I have never seen my kids as happy as that before or like it was the best thing that happened there during 10 years I mean this uh, answers uh, we show the quality they, they are more um, so to say more valuable than like how many uh, likes or whatever the, so right now when we are in this uh, new digital sphere uh, of course all these things also uh, have importance but sometimes sometimes it's just uh, yeah like you said the quality uh, like we, we cannot for sure say like 500 or 1000 people were there but 
all comments were good everyone was happy and we just really saw <laughs> happy people so that was and it didn't uh, matter uh, in, in this case so if there were 500 or 800 yes it, it also was important but the thing is that it was the best thing ever happening there and that's the most important thing uh, it's a good uh, combination of those two yeah you don't have yeah, to one to... for one apart Yes, of course, of course, important. yeah. But also the qualitative, the qualitative, so it can be uh, related and it could be understood in a better way. And you can understand actually more if it's a like success, if you have both at the same time, and not only one of them. So for me, the best thing is to talk about a combination of the both of methodology of how to measure the success of something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. Now, I think we have to translate for everybody because it's a very interesting uh, question. Um, so, можно измеряя успех проекта, можно говорить о количественных и о качественных показателях. И на самом деле, вот сейчас еще Луис добавил, что для него это всегда именно сочетание обоих. Нельзя один исключать. Uh, например, uh, понятно, что можно что-то посчитать, но часто очень важен и uh, качественный, качественная оценка проекта, то есть описание того, uh, как люди чувствуют, чувствуют себя в этом пространстве, что они о нем думают, счастливы ли они, uh, что они uh, выучили, узнали, и не только как бы, горожане, но и создатели проекта, что они узнали, создавая его, возвращаются ли они туда, потому что, например, если не возвращаются, или uh, как бы ушедших больше, чем пришедших, то как бы из этого можно тоже сделать какие-то выводы. И, ну, конечно, в наше время очень важно и собирать какие-то количественные данные, то есть аналитика сейчас позволяет это все делать, дата аналитика, но все равно очень важно и просто думать, общаться, записывать, это вот как раз уж относится к качественным данным. Uh, и, конечно, важно подмечать uh, небольшие вещи, которые были успешными в проекте, и как бы дальше их интегрировать, и так собирать uh, какой-то такой уже проект, который приведет к большому успеху. То есть маленькие вещи тоже нужно замечать. А я потом добавила, что uh, у нас был наш личный опыт на Парнасе, что uh, после проведения фестиваля uh, нас спрашивали, сколько было просмотров, лайков там в интернете, и очень, сколько точно было посетителей, и нам нужно было отчитываться про это. Но для нас, uh, как бы еще немаловажным показателем было то, что а, а, люди говорили, что они счастливы, что это было лучшее событие за всю жизнь а, на этой территории, что а когда еще будет, а будет еще проводить, а мы хотим еще и так далее. И это для нас было вот немаловажно. И я сказала это Луису, и он сказал, что а, ну, важно сочетание этих факторов тоже и, и количественных, и качественных. Uh, so, yes, I guess we 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 are finishing i mean it was very very cool but uh, yeah we we it was the longest lecture out of all our series some is and actually say but it's good it's good i mean a lot of material i think everybody would happy when we will post the recording uh so uh thank you very much uh thank you louise thank you aurora and the whole bureau Zulu Arc, we will send you the recording. Uh, it was very, very nice to meet you. And um, if you ever need any lecture, any support from us, we will be glad to also present and take part in everything. Спасибо большое за участие. Все, нам всем очень все понравилось. Uh, будем обязательно на связи, выложим запись. So, uh, my, my laptop is uh, already uh, out of power. So, anyway, thank you very much. Bye. Thank bye. you. Hope to see you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Luis. It was really important to uh, hear your uh, experience. It is very inspiring how you communicate and integrate it to so many offices around the world. I think we should uh, realize all this information and stuck it in our mind because it's very necessary for us to hear this. Thank you a lot. Es pasiva, it was my pleasure.
really if, uh, keep in contact and be, keep on sharing all these things and any other projects and any other things that you are doing in Russia and let's keep in contact and let's see what we can uh, develop together soon or later or here or there. Now I'm in Mexico, in Mayan. Everybody that I told that I'm doing a lecture with Russian people are like, what, what are you talking about? That's, that's, that has no sense. Okay. Like, whoa, there's the sense of sharing. For us, it's very important. And hopefully it was uh, inspiring for you and it was helpful for you. And also it was very nice for me. We also learn from this project. I also learn a lot about reflecting in all these things that we were talking. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much and uh, goodbye. And I uh, hope goodbye. to see you soon. Keep, yes. on, keep in touch. Keep in touch, yes. yes. Thank you, Luis. Aurora, goodbye. Aurora. <laughs> Thank you, Aurora, that is over there. <laughs> we are finished. Yeah. Okay, I will finish for all, I think. Uh -huh. oh, goodbye. Okay. Thank you, Maria and Anton. See you soon. Bye-bye.